Hello, I'm Toby Delbrook. I'm going to tell you about the Learning to Control Challenge. Well, it's very simple. It's to learn dynamics from controlled data using machine learning and then optimally control with model predictions from this learned model. Um, this is a topic area that's been organized by uh, myself and Manfred Marari. Uh, we've gathered an expert panel for Wednesday's discussion here. These are world leading experts in control. And we have this great set of invited speakers I'll tell you about later. But this whole learning to control topic area is a result of a year long discussion from this team of people from around the world. We've been meeting weekly since last year's workshop uh, to plan for this year's workshop and to work on projects in this domain. Uh, I'm going to tell you about the invited talks. The first talk on Wednesday will be from Ugo Rosolia from the Amber Lab at Caltech about learning how to autonomously race a car, a predictive control approach. And here you can see Ugo's car in the desert driving the first lap like a grandmother or grandfather, very sedately. And if you want to learn after just a couple of laps how to control a car and drive like that, then come to Ugo's talk. On Friday, we're going to hear from Junhu Lee, who is at the Robotics and Systems Lab at ETH Zurich, about learning quadrupedal locomotion over challenging terrains. He's going to uh, show us the work that he's been doing on using reinforcement learning in transfer learning uh, to let the animal robot from ASL walk over these extremely challenging terrains here, outdoor snow, ice, and slippery. So if you want to hear about how um, they managed to do that with Animal, then come to his talk on Friday. And then next Wednesday, Sebastian Trim from Aachen, will, who has a lot of experience in this domain, um, will tell us lessons from using ML from control. He'll show us some examples from their lab and then open discussion um, from the participants about how they achieve these things. So the aim of this LTC21 topic area is inspired by racing like we see here in our simulated L2 race thing. It's essentially to explore methods for system identification with machine learning, for example, deep neural networks, to do control based on the prediction of future states of the system, for example, by joining model predictive control and model predictive path integration. And thirdly, to combine these two things, system identification and model predictive control for state of the art control of a dynamical system, specifically a car or a cart pole. Finally, to discuss the use of artificial intelligence hardware acceleration for real-time optimal control, rather than just inference. So why do we want to learn a model? Well, specifically for the purpose of nonlinear model predictive control, that's NNPC, in conjunction with a stochastic optimization method like Model Predictive Path Integration, MPPI. Uh, that's illustrated in this beautiful auto rally work from Georgia Tech, um, where the dynamical system of the car, which in this case is handcrafted model, uh, that's fitted to the data, is rolled out using these white rays here. So at every point in time, there are thousands of rollouts made here to select the optimal control for the throttle uh, steering and brake so that this car can be driven around the track at speeds that approach the best human drivers. So this is a wide open area in control to explore methods like this, and that's what we want to explore in this topic area. How can we learn this model of complex model of dynamics in a deep neural network and use that in conjunction with AI hardware, finally to allow brute force uh, numerical optimization of optimal control. The history of this is in Telluride 2019, we used a recurrent neural network control to control a hybrid dynamical transfemoral prosthesis. This is basically an electronic leg uh, with an edge delta recurrent neural network accelerator. This is work uh, led by Rachel and Chang. Uh, this is the team of 2019, but it was the first work to use a hardware accelerated RNN for real-time control. Here you can see Rachel's AMPRO leg at Caltech um, uh, controlled by the proportional derivative controller that's following the trajectory of these steps and now controlled by the recurrent neural network, which is a kind of a spiking recurrent neural network accelerator, um, which runs on an FPGA board that costs less than $90, burns less than two watts. It's sitting here on the leg and it runs the RNN more than 50 times faster than a Raspberry Pi. 
In Telluride 2020, we, uh, because we had to go online, we wrote the Learning to Race platform, the simulated racing game, and we got out our joystick controllers, we collected data, we tried system identification with a method called CINDY and with deep neural networks, and that culminated at the end of the workshop with a tri-continental race of these four human-controlled cars here. You can see that they're having difficulty getting around the track. But anyway, that's where we were left at the end of 2020's workshop. Then since the workshop, the team has been working on uh, the development of a beautiful cart pole simulator. That's Martin's work mainly, along with Frederick, um, where you're able to control this cart pole uh, graphically and also by algorithms. And with that, you're able to collect training data. And here's an example of multilayer perceptron and gated recurrent unit uh, RNN predictions of the cart pole dynamics. So here is time on this axis. Here is the angle of this cart pole. And you can see the rollouts that are, comp that are computed by the deep neural network here are quite accurate. They're accurately predicting the angle of this cart pole in response to the control input coming from the motor, the simulated motor. And using these predictions here, we can now start to do model predictive path integration the same way you saw for the race car video. So at every point in time, we can roll out hundreds or thousands of trajectories and then try to select an optimal plan to control the position and angle of this cart pole as a function of time. Here you see the angle is controlled vertically and the cart pole, we're trying to follow a trajectory here shown in black and the control is able to do the green uh, position control. So it's not perfect yet. Uh, so there's still work to do there, but we'd like you to join in that effort. And we'd like to apply these same techniques to the learning to race game, in particular using a new drifter car model, which should be quite fun to drive, uh, which is developed at, at TU Munich. So we have a number of smaller and larger projects in mind. So for example, is a gated recurrent unit an advantage? Can we adapt to parameter changes thanks to its memory? For example, if the friction of the whole track changes, does the memory of the GRU, can it kind of learn that in a short-term memory and, and apply that to the predictions? Can we get better prediction accuracy with a gated recurrent unit than with a multilayer perceptron with the same number of trainable parameters? How can we deal with control data imbalance or little control data? Very common problem in control. Can we do some clever optimizing? For example, can we improve our results by using gradient information from model predictive path integration, a gradient computed during numerically, and can we do early stopping of the high cost rollout computations if the cost gets too high, for example? On the real car pole, can the deep neural network model time delays? Always a problem in control and unmodeled noise and nonlinearities, like the motor, for instance, also hard to model. And many, many more projects. So please join our Learning to Control channel and our topic area meetings. We welcome your participation. We will see you Wednesday for Ugo's talk and expert panel discussion, and we encourage you to see our collection of short video tutorials to prepare. Thank you.